Gamescom ONL 2022. New IPs, game updates, release windows, and a new PS5 Pro controller? Huh. All in all, I think this event was a mixed bag of some very exciting announcements, some disappointments, and frankly, some stuff I just don't really care about. And don't you just hate it when a huge chunk of the game trailers are all just cinematics? Don't get me wrong though, give credit to where credit's due. I respect the hard work put into these, but it should really be an unwritten rule at this point that trailers for games should have some gameplay in them. Even just a little bit, that's all I'm asking. Well anyway, here are a few notable games that I'll be keeping my eye on. If your favorite game isn't on this list, feel free to tell me how terrible I am in the comment section below. And while you're at it, go ahead and click that like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so you can immediately let me know how much I hurt you and your feelings after every video I upload. This is Miles, and with all that out of the way, let's run it back. First on the chopping block is Dead Island 2. It's hammer time. My thoughts exactly. I'd lower my expectation for this one though. While it does look like it seemed to have captured the spirit and the gameplay of the original Dead Island games, this is the Embracer group we're talking about, and we know how their most recent game turned out. For the gameplay alone though, I could see this being a fun romp of a zombie game, especially if you like playing co-op. However, how will it fare among the now oversaturated market of zombie games? That remains to be seen. Next, we have Dead Space. Oh wait, no, this, this is the Callisto Protocol. I didn't have high hopes for this one, folks, but this trailer, let me tell you, now I'm hyped. A true successor to the Dead Space franchise, complete with all the blood and gore you could ask for. Some of the animations were a bit hit or miss though, such as the water just passing through the character's legs. And then there's this jittery animation with this thing. I gotta admit, that was pretty sick though. Next up, we have Lice of P. I almost said Life of Pi. Not gonna lie, the first time I heard about this game a few months ago, I thought it's just another Soulsborne knockoff. But now that gameplay was actually shared, color me impressed. A steampunk design and aesthetic, fluid animations, and a wide variety of environments to play in. Apparently, it's a unique and dark take on the classic story of Pinocchio as he goes on his tireless journey to become human. However, what really intrigued me about this game was about their unique lie system where what you do and say as Pinocchio affects the gameplay. I definitely have my eye on this one. Let's see where this goes. Now we can't have a Gamescom discussion video without talking about the much anticipated Harry Potter game, Hogwarts Legacy. So we have more wizard duels here, a new release date, the contents of the deluxe edition, if that's what you're into, and also a bit more of a story reveal leading us closer to the idea that this could turn out to be similar to how Infamous famously handled their story, where you can either be a good or an evil character. Well, I know what I'm going with. The next game we have on our list is High on Life. A new IP by Squanch Games, the video game development studio founded by Rick and Morty's Justin Roiland. I don't know about the rest of you, but I think this is a day one purchase for me. The trailer showcases, I believe, a boss fight? I'm not really sure how to react to it, but it has a lot of quirky elements, including talking weapons, like a Morty gun. Well, we're actually hitting her! As well as an overly sadistic talking knife. I'll slice in the f gap. I'll cut their heads off. I'll no, rip their limbs off. Whoa, whoa, reel it back there, buddy. Anyway, this has no release date yet, but it already looks like a very interesting addition to Squanch Games portfolio. Next up, we have Return to Monkey Island. Huh, I didn't expect that. 
For all you millennials watching, you may remember an old game from the 90s called The Secret of Monkey Island. These series of games were produced and published by Lucasfilm Games and developed by Telltale Games. The Secret of Monkey Island was a point-and-click adventure game that was as witty as it was charming, a far cry from the endless cookie-cutter games we have today. So, Return to Monkey Island is a true-to-form sequel to the mainline series of Monkey Island games, and based on the trailer itself, looks to be just as witty and charming as its predecessor. You can't do much better than this exotic and extremely remote island! Stay back! How did you find me? Return to Monkey Island is now helmed and developed by Devolver Digital, so you can definitely expect good quality here. Return to Monkey Island graces our shores next month. So not really much of a trailer here, but I have a lot of questions for this new open world game by a former Grand Theft Auto producer. It only really showed just a few clips of what we can expect, but the teaser trailer claims that Everywhere is a multi-world game experience that blurs the line between reality and the digital world. Let's check it out. So are we getting some Kojima-esque breaking the fourth wall here? We may find out soon. Speaking of Hideo Kojima, the man himself made an appearance at Gamescom to make a big announcement. But wait! Enhance! What's with the Spotify logo? Huh. Kojima Hideo. I'm Ah, good old Kojima, trolling everyone in the audience again. Never change, Kojima, never change. Going back, the next game on our list is Dune Awakening. Remember when I said I wish there were some gameplay alongside cinematic trailers? Yeah, I'm specifically referring to this one. Honestly, the cinematic trailer got me hyped. Until they announced what kind of game this is. An open world survival MMO. I'm up for all things survival games, but that MMO tag almost guarantees that this would be monetized like crazy. No thank you. Oh hey, Xbox and PC finally get Ghost of Tsushima. Psych! It's a Chinese knockoff titled Where Winds Meet. Look, it has everything from the environment design, aesthetic, various swordplay, traversal, and even ship sieges. Not gonna lie though, that running on water mechanic looks pretty dope. Okay, so I haven't watched The Expanse yet, but I heard good things. Apparently, this next game is a story-driven game the likes of Life is Strange. Oh hey, it is by the developers of Life is Strange, Deck 9. Heck, I'd give it a shot. That pre-alpha footage looks very alpha though. Good thing it isn't out anytime soon, with a summer 2023 release date. Okay, so now we're down to the last game on our list, Atlas Fallen. We won't let go. For now. We can stand for ourselves. Enough of these cinematic trailers and show me some game. Oh, I guess I could wait a bit longer for an actual gameplay trailer. We'll see. All right, that's it for the video. I hope you all enjoyed that. I know, I know, this is just the third video we have on this channel. And while we're on our way to get the channel monetized, please support us by watching our other videos. And if you haven't already, go ahead and click that like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell to be updated whenever we upload a new video. GG everyone, peace.